You ever wonder why some people seem to effortlessly climb in their careers and other people get stuck? Are you transferring in your career or looking to break into something and you feel a lack of motivation? It took me seven days to read this book when I first read it, and I'm going to try to break it down to you and let's, let's get into it. We're going to be ready work. to get this work. Get this work. Get, get this work. Get this work. work. So they say knowledge is power, right? And power is definitely what you need, especially if you're feeling demotivated, lost, or confused in your career. Really, this book is the science and the art of habits. This book gave me an appreciation of why it's so important for you to trust the process. Something that I talk about in the Get This Workbook. Here's the framework. Everything big in this world is made up of smaller things. Atoms are the building block of our body. Goals are kind of the same way. So here's my first hot take. Here's a quote from the book. It's so easy to overestimate the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making small improvements on a daily basis. Too often we convince ourselves that massive success requires massive action. Whether it is losing weight, building a business, writing a book, winning a championship, or achieving any other goal, we put pressure on ourselves to make some earth-shattering improvement that everyone will talk about. Man, if that ain't the truth. And I get it, man. Social media in general will have you thinking that you need to do something crazy that success just happens overnight, and the reality is that it doesn't. Neither does getting a job, neither does getting better at interviewing, neither does growing your brand. Like It all requires small things happening, not earth-shattering things. And so then the thing that happens that everybody mentions when they talk about this book, he quantifies what happens when you compound 1%, a tiny little gain, and if you got 1% better every day. Question is, do you think you can get 1% better every day? I'll break it down even further. It's 24 hours in a day. What makes up 1% of it? If you could take 1% of your day and be really intentional about getting better, really intentional about getting this work, I guarantee you'll get better. 1%, 15 minutes. 15 minutes a day. Which is like, all right, you take 2%, how much more would you grow? But he breaks it down. So if you got 1% better today, then 1% better tomorrow, and you did that for 365 days in a row, how much better would you think you would be at the end of a year if you grew 1% a day, compounded interest? The answer, 37 times better. All right, you get 37 times better than your current self by just giving 1% a day. These tiny little gains end up having massive results. 1% a day. And so if you're new in your career, establishing a routine is going to be key. And being consistent with it, the consistency of it, like 1% today without 1% tomorrow doesn't help you. That initial investment of time is going to be extremely important. Now, while you're investing this time, you might be thinking like, man, when is it, when is it going to be my turn? Because sure, I started investing 1% a day. I started to, to put in the work. And so when is it going to be my turn? Because I'm, I've am i been doing this and I'm ready, I'm ready to just honestly throw in the tile. And again, I know what that feels like. Second concept in the book, he talks about what's called the plateau of laden potential. Here's a quote to break it down. Complaining about not achieving success despite working hard is like complaining about an ice cube not melting when you heated it from 25 to 31 degrees. Your work was not wasted. It's just being stored. All the action happens at 32 degrees. I don't know why this blew my mind when I read it, but it's just so true. People, they, they put in the work. You're getting this work. Just keep going. Keep going. This concept of an ice cube melting at 32 degrees and like you put in all this work and you got it to 31 and you stopped at the, just the, the, the edge. It's, man, don't let your hard work go in vain, man. Keep putting in the work, promise it, it'll pay off. And so while we're on the subject of like this compounded interest, like in finance, interest is huge. It's the secret sauce to making money and to building good habits. Yet, you gotta ask, like, why don't people often save? Like, what's 1% sometimes seems so small. And the reason that most people don't commit to the 1% a day, just doing something 1% a day, 
it's because there's a delay between the time that you start engaging in the certain behavior that you're doing and when you're going to see results. And so there's a delay when you typically start re rework and actually commit to doing a process to getting better. It's a delay between when you are trying to improve yourself professionally and personally until when you start seeing results. And honestly, that's why rework training works differently, works at different times for different people. It's unfortunate that most people don't give growth enough time. Like I said earlier, they get disillusioned by social media, influencers, commercials, and they just give up. And so in the book, he uses a few different metaphors to bring home a point. One of them, probably my favorite, is about a stone cutter. And so he says, imagine somebody, a stone cutter that's like smacking on a rock. He's hitting this rock again and again. And he hits this rock a hundred times and nothing happens. And then on the hundred and first time, it happens. The rock cracks, it splits. Now, with all the effort that he spent hitting the rock a hundred times for nothing, no, it was just the latent potential being stored. Now, all it took was the effort of that last hit, the last strike to actually create the results. Same is true with your career and everything else and any other habit in your life that you're trying to knock out, that if you endure during the tough times and stick to it, you're going to see the results that you want. It's not going to be easy, which is why this next quote from the book really is applicable. Your culture sets your expectations for what is normal. Surround yourself with people who have the habits you want to have yourself. You will rise together. I can't stress this enough how big and how big community is when you're trying to transition into jobs and you're trying to get a job. Some people create a culture of solitude, which honestly gets in the way. Like they want to be mysterious and it's lone wolf. They want the narrative of being like, man, I got here by myself and nobody helped me, which honestly is a popular narrative in some cultures. I know because I'm from one of those cultures. Being able to say you're self-made. Think about it. Nobody's self-made. We all need help at some point, And it's better if you're intentional about getting the help. Which again, not to shamelessly plug rework training over and over again, but it's the reason why the community was created. And really, like our goal is to create a culture that embodies that quote. Here's my next take on the book. Are you becoming the type of person you want to become? The first step is not what or how, but who. You need to know who you want to be. You have the power to change your beliefs about yourself. Your identity is not set in stone. You have a choice in every moment. You can choose the identity you want to reinforce today with habits you choose today. Man, another just powerful quote. When I read this, I kind of thought about Jay-Z, public service announcement. Allow me to reintroduce myself. And sometimes it's okay to reintroduce yourself as many times as you need to until you get it right. We're looking to become the best versions of ourselves that we possibly can. So we want to be the, we're looking to be the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. And we want to let the image of that person drive the behaviors and then the outcomes will just be a byproduct of that identity. But it'll only be an outcome based on the processes or the systems and the habits that we built and that we put in place. Long story short, if you have a process and you trust the process, then the success will come. But the big question, who do you want to become? Got to think about it. His last quote for me, whether we are approaching behavior change as an individual, a parent, a coach, or a leader, we should ask ourselves the same question. How can we design a world where it is easy to do what is right? Redesign your life so the actions that matter most are the actions that are easiest to do. On page 253, he breaks down how to do that. Four simple steps. Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying. But he also breaks down the steps of how to get rid of old and bad habits. Listen, if you don't take anything else away from this video. Can you help me put this on? It keeps going. You really play it, man. Good. That's good. That's good, Dad. I got plenty of other big takeaways that I took away from Atomic Habits. But if you don't remember anything else, remember this especially about your career. As my wife would say, it's all about the journey, meaning that your career is like building blocks. And sure, I know you want to get here, but you got to start somewhere. What can I do today to get 1% better? What 15 minutes can I take to help myself get 1% better? And if you've completed this video, you've already gotten 
just a little bit better today. This book has helped me in my career. I'm pretty sure it'll help you in yours. And if you've read the book, drop in the comments what your biggest takeaway was. And if this video was helpful, please hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, make sure you support your boy. Pick up the Get This Work book, the unofficial guide to breaking into the tech set. Like always, let's get this work.